What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Hey, do you nerd for conventions? You know, the things that we used to get to go to. This is Tom and Lacey, collecting all the things, searching from here to there, finding comic book tables, house Legos, and action figs, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints. Watch as they collect them all. Tom Lacey collecting right now. We are talking about Rubicon. This is put on by a local toy comic collectible shop called Rubelmizers. It is an annual event and we were very, very happy that they had it because it was nice to get back to a convention. Yeah, so usually, even a micro con. Yep. They usually happen in the summertime, but it got canceled for obvious reasons. But they managed to be able to postpone it. So it was pretty cool. They generally have a nice mix of comics, toys, Hot Wheels. Yeah. And let me tell you, when it comes to the toys, I mean, there's some nice new stuff, but oh, the old nostalgic stuff that we all grew up with. So, so cool to see. <laughs> we actually managed to pick up quite a bit there, didn't we? Yes, we did, because and... we had quite a bit of money saved up from no conventions <laughs> this year. <laughs> and not to mention the fact that uh, toys, so, you know, it had your name all over it. It really did. Well, what is something that you found right off the bat? Well, the very first booth we came to right <laughs> inside the front door Bar. was a little Hot Wheels booth. And I found me two Hot Wheels that I really liked. One is a dragon, and everybody knows how much I love my dragons, but it kind of looks like Spyro. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to get sued. Super cute. Loved it. And then I also thought this was a very clever idea but it is kind of the Silver Surfer. <laughs> it's not really, it's a car wave, and it's just a silver surfing guy. Again, somebody's getting sued. <laughs> Marvel might have put up with that, but Marvel with Disney, nope. Okay, so first of all, what is one of our cardinal rules whenever we go to any kind of convention? What do we like to do first and foremost? Make a pass the whole way around first before spending any money. Yeah, yeah. And we did not do that. That, that way, <laughs> you can go around and see if there's something that, in case you bought something at the first booth later on and you don't have the money now, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I wasn't going to pass up on... Ashley Williams. So, what did you find? Uh, probably one of the best heroes, best heroes of all time. <laughs> nice. Hey, look, he's got a little friend. <laughs> now, this is his Army of Darkness version. I got him for a pretty good price. Uh, I think about pretty close to what it would have been retail. Obviously, if you're a sealed toy collector, this is a big deal because it's got that just terrible crease down there. Uh, the, the plastic bubbling is a little broken in, but fortunately, we don't care. We don't care. Turn back, co-op of nerds. <laughs> and so he's free. <laughs> This is a Todd McFarlane figure, creator of Spawn, and let's face it, probably until NECA came along, our favorite he creator was, of yeah. toys. I mean, the most detailed looking figures you could get. This is part of the Movie Maniacs 3 line, and combining Todd McFarlane with Ash, Army of Darkness, I mean, this is great. Now, first and foremost, there's not a lot of movement here. I didn't expect a lot. He's already got a predetermined stance. But you got a little bit in the shoulders and the elbows. Uh, you could try for that head and his feet kind of swivel, but pretty much he's just action-packed, ready to swing that chainsaw. Speaking of which, you can take that chainsaw off and give him his steampunk retro hand that he created in the Dark Ages. That one. Don't know why more people with leprosy didn't just have metal hands back then. <laughs> but the chainsaw is not his only weapon. He does have his boomstick, and the best part—it goes in the sheath. 
Thank you, guys. <laughs> now, he does have that Necronomicon, which is handy because, let's face it, without it, he doesn't have anything better to do. The book itself is uh, its a bit pliable and rubbery. Well, that's interesting. So that's different. And he's got this lovely bone stand. There's a lot <laughs> of detail on this stand, too. I mean, you've got some mice or rats, I guess, on it. I mean, you can definitely see the spine. It almost looks like the gates of hell a little bit, like, <laughs> you know, with the skulls and like almost like, like stretched skin or something over it. Or, you know, Freddy Krueger's chest. Freddy Krueger's chest, yes. And then that awesome movie poster. What was your favorite part of this? The tiny ash with his tiny little fork. <laughs> you want some hot chocolate? <laughs> London Bridge is falling down. Woo! Woo! Falling down. <laughs> My fair lady! <laughs> My fair lady! Ha! I think we've seen that movie a little bit, a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I had to pick this up. Very cool. On the back, it's got a few other McFarlane toys that you can chase after. And it did come with a little advertisement in it for Evil Dead, Hail to the King, the video game. Come on, as much as I love Army of Darkness and Evil Dead, I wasn't passing that up. <laughs> Well, at that exact same booth, in fact, I got me something that goes along with my He-Man toy sorceress. It's her in bird form. Totally awesome. That is cool. That's it. I'm, I'm different. As I told you, from this day on, you shall ever be the sorceress. One more thing that I got from his booth is uh, Darth Vader on a motorcycle. Did you know? <laughs> did you know he uh, on the weekends has joined a motorcycle gang? Now, Anakin <laughs> did have that speeder bike out in the desert. But the cool thing about this one is the fact that basically they have taken a Tie Fighter and broken it down into parts of his motorcycle. So you've got. The cockpit pilot thingy is uh, his like headlights and then the fenders are the wings and everything. So I thought that was kind of neat. I think that's a so, great So Yeah, touch. I think it's very clever. It actually makes for a very cool looking motorcycle. It really does. I know it's a tension toy, but I think it's supposed to have a rip cord and it's missing the ah, rip cord. And he's also missing his lightsaber or his, his drink, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> his lightsaber or his light beer. This guy is so heavy, he could murder someone in the conservatory with the juggernaut. Boom. At one of the comic tables, now uh, one of our con friends was on hand there. We were chatting with him and we noticed he had a little game of chance set up. It's our turn. Hey, you, it, it is for sale, but, but you can, for a dollar you can roll. If you get 12, you get it. So there were a few select comic title set out <laughs> you roll the dice and if you happen to roll the right number you could win one of those you went first ladies first of i course. did and i won arkham manor to catch a killer now we like batman just fine so i think we were pretty happy to get that because it's like hey check out a batman comic see if we want to follow up on the storyline exacto mundo now when i rolled I actually had the choice between a couple of different comics and I went for an X-Men issue that I thought I might have. As we made our rounds, I realized, oh, I did have it, a duplicate, but they told me I could trade it out for another $1 issue. So I went with Witchblade and Tomb Raider. Very nice. Now this is the uh, one half issue from Image. And I thought, I don't know, that could be kind of cool. For one, I always loved how Do they drew. you have enjoyed. to find the other half to finish the story? <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> you, you get home and I would be, I would feel very cheated. I'd be like, where's the rest of my comic? Where's the rest of you? <laughs> where's the rest of you?
I found me a red She-Hulk. She looks awesome. I have never really been into the Hulk or She-Hulk comics, but there was just something about this figure that I really liked. I especially liked her hair, actually. I liked the two giant red streaks up front. Like I've always said before, it doesn't matter if you're into it. If you like the way it looks, get it. It might get you into it later. It's the normal articulation from any um, Marvel Legends figure. Well, it is a shame that I could not pick up a, what would have been a great companion piece to that figure, which would have been the high-priced comic issue of <laughs> She-Hulk having to jump rope naked. Yeah, that sounds very painful. From the same booth, I also picked me up a Venom figure. What has drawn me to this Venom figure, the detail on his tongue, for some reason, it looks so lifelike and realistic. Oh God! I don't, I'm not sure what it was, but I just, I couldn't put it down after I saw the tongue. It's just kind of weird. That one is also sexual. Now, he's a huge hulking he figure. He is. And his face, I mean, he's very gruesome, very scary in the face, which uh -huh. I think works well, especially for Venom. Yeah, yeah, he's he's one of my better Venom figures that's actually scary. I like how Venom always has like big hands, like real big <laughs> hands. Now, I also found some Littles. Some teeny tinies? Some Littles, yes. I found a little tiny Aww. Charmander. It's a little squishy Charmander that you can zip open and hide stuff in. Char also found me some fun pins. Deadpool Pikachu, which you know, I need I need this comic in my life. And then something that I thought was super duper cute. It is Squirtle, but it's a Ninja Turtle dressed up as a Squirtle. That's pretty funny. I thought that was just freaking adorable. And then another button I got was um, a candidate for president, which I think you and I both agree we could get behind this candidate. <laughs> but it's a uh, Jason for president. He's got my vote. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Tricia, as a local resident, I feel like I can once again take pride in my community. I think this is really going to revitalize tourism. And, <laughs> and if you look around, I think even the wildlife is starting to come back. And, you know, that's something we haven't seen in a while. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. And then I love picking up these little, like, tiny Funko Pop magnets. I got me a Aquaman. And I got a little Spider-Man. And then, like, a little Venom Deadpool. Super duper cute. Paper Mario Peach and a Paper Mario Mario. Mario Mario. And then I got a Sonic. We never really see the, the video game ones. Yeah, this, this is the first time I've seen those at this booth, so that was a nice find. Those are neat. One thing I really didn't see a whole lot of there was video game stuff. And that's fair. This is a toy convention with a little, you know, comic book and Hot Wheels mixed in. So when you see a, a random Xbox or PS3 game, it's more of a surprise than anything. They did have some nice boxed Super Nintendo systems in one booth. They were a little out of my price range, but it was still fun to see them. However, we did find some gaming related collectibles such as a Pac-Man thermos. Now it is missing that cap that sits on the top. We jumped on it because, I mean, Pac-Man, it's it's like a theme or something. It kind of us. is for us. And it was also in really, really good shape and it wasn't very expensive, so. Yeah, the fact that there's a few minor scuff marks, but it doesn't look like this is one of the ones that's nearly been totally rubbed away and you've got like flecks of paint for the image left. And that's saying <laughs> something, seeing as how it's from 1980. I, I still have an issue with Pac-Man having legs. <laughs> And since this kind of goes with it, we got the Super Mario Brothers 2 lunchbox. 
I love that Mario and Luigi are just hanging out. They've got some popcorn. Uh, Mario's holding the NES controller like a television remote. <laughs> but they've got some Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link going on on that. Jesus, that's a big screen Especially TV. for that time period. That's a really big TV. <laughs> Now this one does have the thermos inside. And again, you are repeating the theme of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Well, Link is very blonde. That uh, so's Princess Zelda. Boy, they've changed their hair color so many times. Well, look, you know, it's a girl's prerogative. Look at some of these <laughs> monsters though. This Stalfos looks fantastic. Yeah. And then you have some Super Mario Brothers 2 action with the uh, Beezer looking a little more like a scream. Yeah. Monster. <laughs> a little bit. I don't know if it's Mario or the monsters busted out of the wall. Someone broke it. <laughs> now, it's a little scuffed. It's not too bad. It does have that cap up top. The only issue with the lunchbox itself was a big crack on the back, but we ended up getting this all together for 10 and it's like, I'm not going to be taking my lunch to work in it anyway, so that's that's fine. And honestly, I mean, we got it for a display purpose anyway. The front of it actually looks really, really good. And not yeah. a lot of people are going to be looking at the back and the crack in the back. Don't look at the crack in the back, you guys. <laughs> The next booth I went to, I found quite a lot of things. It, it hurt the pocketbook a bit on this one, but I found me some fun spider figs. This one, I'm not sure what window I want him to go on. All I knew is when I got it, I was like, it's going on a window. It's either gonna go on the car window or the bedroom window. I don't know where it's gonna go, but he's gonna be climbing windows. And then I found me a little Spider-Man. It was the only Spider-Man in the box that had all of his limbs. I found a ton of this exact Spider-Man, in fact, in this box of his. And every one of them was missing either an arm here or a hand or a leg or something. I don't know. It was some kind of battle they all went through. And this is the only one that made it. Good grief. <laughs> so one tough soldier there. That's one thing I love about almost all Spider-Man action figures. It doesn't matter if it's a Marvel Legends or just any, any other kind. They always have so much articulation, even like the little toes will curl. Then I found myself a Carnage action figure, and I'm not exactly sure what this one's supposed to do because there's like a dial back here on his back, but it doesn't appear to do anything. That's just to make sure your Carnage is dialed in before so. he goes to attack. I guess so, so yeah. Rawr. Oh no, Spider-Man. <laughs> And I also, I have never seen this one before, but it's the Green Goblin uh, Carnageized, I guess, or Venomized or carniv Carnageized? Carnivinomized. Carnivinomized. He looks so cool, though. This he is, really does. This is the type of figure that you see, and it's like, oh, is this like a whole new baddie? Because, I mean, he could be his own character. Yeah, I mean, look at just look at those tendrils coming off of him. It's just... That's a nice touch. Yeah, I really liked this figure. I really knew as soon as I saw this that I had to get this figure, even though I know nothing about this, <laughs> about this guy or this line. <laughs> oh, carnage down. See? <laughs> he wasn't dialed in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> also, got a Dr. Morbius. And the neat thing about the him is you can either have his rawr, cape or his, I'm just going for a stroll cape. <laughs> so, you know, you can take this off and put a, just kind of like, you know, just kind of walking around. What else? You know what? Before the movie comes out, that's probably the best time to pick him up. Oh, yeah. Because if that movie does well, you might see his price go up a little bit. Well, the other thing is, is I have actually have been looking for him for quite a while, um, but I never found him for a price I was okay with, and then I finally found him this time. I found me a really super cute Funko Pop. <laughs> I love these. When I was playing the Wizards Unite, this was always the creature I would always go for. He was one of my favorite ones to catch. I, if I ever find a plushie of this guy, all bets are off. I don't care how expensive it is. I didn't even know they had made one of these, so I was super excited to find one because I fell in love with them in the movie, and then Wizards Unite somehow made them even cooter. I don't know how. The moon calf 
is an intensely shy creature that emerges from its burrow only at the full moon. Its body is smooth and pale grey, it has bulging round eyes on top of its head and four spindly legs with enormous flat feet. Moon calves perform complicated dances on their hind legs in isolated areas in the moonlight. These are believed to be a prelude to mating and often leave intricate geometric patterns behind in wheat fields to the great puzzlement of muggers. On a side note, you like Funko just fine, but it generally takes a very special one to make you pop on buying one. To pop on a Funko pop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Walked right into that you one. You did, you really did. I feel like Funko Pop are the herpes of the nerd world. They're everywhere and everyone has one. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those things that it's just like, it got oversaturated. So it really takes a special one for me. <laughs> well, then you guys have it. Lady Lacey said you all have herpes. <laughs> Seriously? Hey, you're the one who said play our roles. So. Yeah. I've got genital herpes. And then I got one last large item. <laughs> oh my gosh, I still can't believe you grabbed this. If it wasn't so heavy, I would have carried it around all day. Because those are legit Spider-Man sounds. Hey Peter, how are you? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you got <laughs> You really, you hey, got web slickers? It's me, Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. You got a five black cat. Well, yeah, it's heavy because he's got the plastic of like 17 <laughs> action Look figures. Look how big this guy is. I will be unstoppable, invincible. Just say at least a good five pounds. Uh, at yeah, least. easily. He's. He's a solid figure. This is not like one of the big figures that you get that kind of has like a hollow feel. Ugh. Ugh, he's kind of creepy. It's like a horror movie. <laughs> I'm Spider-Man. He also needs to visit the chiropractor. <laughs> Listen to those cracking bones. Holy <sighs> jeez. I will say though, the thing that sold me on this guy, other than how big he was, is the amount of articulation this guy has. He does have some very loose joints, especially in the head area. So he does have all of the obvious articulation that pretty much every toy has. He's got the triple jointed elbows. The thing that I always like about Spider-Man are the fact that the toes have those extra like joints in them so he can like really grip stuff, I guess, with his feet. But one thing I usually never see are the fingers and he has every joint in his finger is a joint what kind of cigarette is that joint joint they don't make them very good i just was very impressed with all the movement that he could do but the hands really were what sold it for me yeah a <laughs> also <laughs> Stop being creepy with your head, Spider-Man. I know, he does kind of look like a creepy doll. Hey, Spider-Man. I think we're pretty clear who's in charge here. Me! Said no. Something kind of neat on one of the tables were some cards and they had uh, like full sets of card packs and everything and then they had some random cards in little baggies and I actually picked up this one because it's got little link on there. 
it's uh, an old sticker with some top secret tips on the back but then you have like the fun little scratcher tickets and everything and most of these do have some kind of tip on the back about how to defeat bosses and everything you've got some fun mario ones even a double dragon one and oh there's there's a bobo from double dragon or uh I guess Gabo has been filling in this role lately. Gabo looks like a bobo. Do, 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 do. Oh, how do you walk like this? How do you walk like this, right? Ow, dude, why are you hitting me so hard? Another little baggie of cards that I picked up, I could not resist. These are the Nintendo Power Super Power Club cards. Now, these usually came in a three quarters sheet within the magazine themselves. They were perforated so that you could take them out. A lot of people left them in the magazines. Obviously, someone took them out. I don't know if this is a full set or not, but it was only $4 and I was like, hey, this is not something you see that often. Mm -hmm. I had to get this. On the back, you get a description of the game and then there's a challenge. Tell you what, some of these awesome gamers in our community, Megadan, T-Belly, Captain Algebra, Maybe I need to start posting some of these yeah, challenges off these cards fun. and see if they can take them down. Here's one for Battletoads. So, challenge. In the second level, how many extra lives can you earn for repeatedly bopping birds into the wall? A novice can get two. The intermediate can get five, whereas the pro can get eight. Oh, look at that. Super Smash TV. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. That's a great example of why take your time, mm -hmm. really look over these tables. I did not see these our first pass through. This was one of our follow up pass throughs. I agree with you. Definitely take your time and look because it was kind of the same thing with the Pac Man thermos. It was one of the first booths that we passed and didn't see it. And mm -hmm. I swore that I looked through all the bins under the table, but. It, I just missed it somehow. And, and of course, you know, sometimes the vendors might put stuff out on the true. table later. But again, all the more reason to make yep. that second pass. Through. There were not a ton of people at RubleCon this year. I think maybe a lot of people are still playing it a little safe. People were being very respectful, mm -hmm. keeping their masks on the whole time. More often than not, everyone was trying to give you plenty of space. So it was nice to have kind of that con experience, even a smaller con like this, but you know, to have people adhering to the rules with that safety mindset. Yes. We actually have a couple more things to go over from RubleCon, but first we did get to go to our local mall for a fun cosplay event that was going on. Again, you're not getting that full convention experience, but getting to see a bunch of people in some pretty sweet anime themed costumes mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. There is actually a store that specializes in anime merchandise called Otaku Anime. And they had some cool stuff in there. This is the kind of place that's gonna hurt your wallet if you're an anime fan of any kind. Mm -hmm. You managed to find just a couple of things. I did. I know something in this fella. So the first thing I picked up was oh. a little uh, Rosalina kitty costume, which love it. Rosie's my favorite princess. I also got a giant llama or alpaca, whatever you want to call it, wearing a tutu. <laughs> <laughs> and a cute little barrette. <laughs> it just kept saying, come take me home, take That's me home. That's ridiculous, but ridiculously That's adorable too. Super. I was actually quite surprised. This was only $25. Oh, well, see, it wouldn't be a Lady Lacey pickup without a new plushie. I know. Now this event was put on by Vision Con, a local very fun convention when we get conventions. <laughs> Naturally, there will be links in the description below, both for RubleCon and VisionCon, so please check them out and 
keep all of this in mind. This is a great lesson. Keep your ear to the ground mm -hmm. so that you can check stuff out like this. Jumping back to Rubicon, we could not leave without one of Lady Lacey's favorite things ever to pick up anytime. Mystery bags! <laughs> I love mystery bags! <laughs> she got four of them. I did. <laughs> All right, any pirated words for Rubicon 2020 now that we graciously got it? I am so glad they had it. So yes, to me too. Because I spent way too much money, but I got some way cool <laughs> stuff, and I missed going to my conventions. I had a great time as well. It was just small enough that it was kind of nice to make, a, you know, half a day out of it, mm -hmm. but it was also just enough to make me want more more conventions we had a great time it was so great to see some of our con friends catch up with them see what they've been up to and to find you know all the fun stuff that we did find so leave those comments down below give the video a like if you happen to like it make sure you subscribe hit that notification bell because if another convention actually ever happens we're going to be trying to check it out and letting you know what we found there. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise over there. And also hit us up on the Retro Refresh. And if we like it... We nerd it. Although I think you might nerd it for mystery bags just a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. Oh, he needs some more fish oil pills. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up, both of you. Right in front door. Let me try that again. The front door, right inside the front door. The first booth I popped at, I found some... Just start it again. Just put it back over there. Start again. It's okay. okay. Both of you. <laughs> Shut up, I was excited. <laughs> and she, whoops. So, okay, dead bird. <laughs> Idiot. It says one half on the front. Duh. <laughs> dead it. Oh, no, it's not. It's a stupid Tom. Okay, ready? <laughs> yes. Now he looks like he's driving. <laughs> we, uh, definitely probably got too much stuff today. Yeah, there you go. <laughs>